So a lot of people have seen our videos on flow charting. Flow charting is basically the way that we want students who are studying for the MCAT to go through science passages in order to get the most important information to answer questions. It's almost a way of going faster and more efficiently through science passages. Because the thing is, in CARS passages, you have to understand everything, right? You have to synthesize every sentence, how it impacts the main idea. Everything is important in a CARS passage, but in a science passage, not even close. And reading these science passages is different than anything you've done in your undergrad career. A lot of students go into it like they're reading a textbook and they're trying to synthesize all of this information and it's understandable why you do that why you're trying to understand every sentence, every detail, every enzyme, every basic science, but you are wasting time when you do that. And when you're wasting time, you're gonna get more questions wrong because some questions take more than a minute. And so if you don't shave off as much time as you can in the passages, then you're gonna end up wasting time, not having enough time to actually properly think through the questions. So today I'm gonna to tell you guys how to read a science passage on the MCAT. This is sort of adjacent to the idea of flow charting. When it's more like the why behind flow charting, like why, why is flow charting helpful? Because if you know why flow charting is helpful, then you're gonna be able to flow chart better because I get comments all the time, like I'm taking forever when I flow chart in passages. I understand everyone takes forever when they first start out because they don't understand why they're doing it but I'm gonna tell you today. If you're new here, my name's Maggie. I'm a fourth year medical student. I was a professional MCAT tutor before I went to med school and now I run this business and this channel with my brother, John, and I'm dressed up all nice because I have a pre-interview social tonight because I have my first residency interview tomorrow. Can you tell I'm pumped? All right, but getting back into what you guys care about, here's how to read science passages. If you haven't watched our video on flow charting, we have a couple of them. Make sure to go give those a watch. If you want examples, you can look at any of our like sample tests, playlists, whatever. But flow charting is gonna pair really nicely with this video. Science passages are just a way to get data across, okay? When the writers of the MCAT are writing these science passages, they have to wrap it up in a bow. They have to say, okay, I, you know, according to my MCAT metrics, we need to ask one question on enzyme kinetics, one question on half-life, one question on amino acids, and one logic and reasoning question. So they write this MCAT passage that has things that you can pull from it to extrapolate to a question to ask about enzyme kinetics or half-life or whatever the other things I said, <laughs> amino acids. But most of that science passage is not going to show up in the questions. So you're not reading the science passage to learn anything. You are reading it to find the parts of the passage that are going to matter when you get to the questions. This begs the question, should I just skip the passage entirely and go straight to the question? I never did that. I do it some now when I'm going through passages, but that's because I don't have to score well now. I don't have to worry about timing now. You guys still have to worry about that. So I would recommend just getting in the habit of just quickly skimming the passage, doing really good on your flow charting so you're pulling out those relationships and then hitting the questions fast. Not necessarily just skipping straight to the questions, but okay. Back to what I was talking about earlier. I hate going back to cars passages, but I fully anticipate almost every question to go back to the science passage for the details. So your job when you're first reading the, pa the passage is to map the structure of everything, but not to absorb everything. Here's what to focus on the first time through when you're reading a passage. Experimental design. So what's the independent and the dependent variables? Similarly, a lot of times they will give you figures with results of the passage, results of the experiment, whatever. I would have a good figure summary going into the questions. You don't have to know every little detail, but know what each figure is showing at a glance. You don't have to dig into that data, just know where it is. I have videos on figure interpretation. A lot of this is strategy stuff. Like I have videos on figure interpretation, how to do that. You should not be spending more than 20 or 30 seconds on any specific figure. You should be bookmarking like cause and effect claims. This is the relationships that we talk about in flow charting. So when I add this to solution, this decreases. When I inject in vitro cells with this, this increases. Those are the kinds of relationships you need to know. You take this medication and it creates the signaling cascade that causes this outcome. Those are cause and effect. Those are relationships. Those are easily tested things that take a while to go back and reread in the passage. You get it on the first go through and you're like, okay, yeah, I get these two things are related, whatever. 
But then you have to, like, you get to a question and they ask you, like, if you change this, then how does that change? And then it's, and it's never a straightforward question. Then you have to go back to the passage. You have to reread it. You have to refigure out the relationship. Whereas if you had written down, you know, this or whatever enzyme increases this outcome, then you could say, okay, well, if I'm decreasing that enzyme because I'm changing an amino acid that gives it a, a loss of function mutation, then I'm gonna decrease that. So you can see how it's that much faster, right? And then the last thing you need to know is, or that you need to like mentally bookmark when you're going through a passage is things like basic sciences and units. And those are the things that I highlight when I'm going through passages. If you guys have looked at any of our like sample test stuff on here, FLE5 we no longer can have on like my double AMC breakthroughs. FLE5 we can no longer have on YouTube, but we have it up as a paid resource on our website. And we're gonna be releasing double AMC1 on YouTube as well. Cause now it's free, so we legally can. But what do you need to ignore while you're reading, okay? Dense jargon. The intro paragraph is almost always pretty much useless. I hardly ever flow chart. I've been really avoiding flow charting in the first paragraph. It's really just an introduction to the science and they hardly ever pull questions from it. You should not be spending more than 30 seconds on a table or whatever. You don't have to look at the details. A lot of times I'll just look at a table and I'll be like, I'll come back to that when I need it. I just make notes of like the axes or the columns and rows and what the table is actually showing me rather than actually interpreting the like data, unless it's really quickly to interpret or really, really quick to interpret. Unfam unfamiliar names. You're gonna run into so many like big words, big jargon, a lot of like long-winded blah, blah, blah on mechanisms in these passages and it's very confusing. And it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You could be the smartest student ever. You can make a 528 and not understand what's in the science passages. That's totally okay. You just have to get questions right. If there's one thing you should take from this is that Maggie and John and IFD does not care if you understand anything on the MCAT. We care if you get questions right, because that's all that you care about. Like, be honest with yourself. That's all I cared about, I made a 526. So you can do it, it works that way. And it's a heck of a lot easier. So that's what you should take note of and the things that you should ignore when you're first going through a passage. Flow charting is just a way to write that out. It's not about having pretty notes. It's not about synthesizing the entire passage. It's not about being able to read it read your flow chart and understand what's going on in the passage. Not at all. You should not be able to read your, like another person should not be able to come in and read your flow charting notes and understand anything that's going on in the passage. It is just a way of forcing your brain to organize only the important things in a passage. If A activates B, you should write that down. If this mutation disrupts that pathway, you should write that the mutation is gonna decrease B. Understand what I'm saying? You're just filtering out through all the noise, through all of the jargon and getting the relationships that the question's gonna ask you about. Now I can tell you guys all of this, but you're not gonna understand it until you see someone do it. So stop what you're doing right now, go watch our videos on flow charting and then go watch like a sample test video or whatever we have up at the moment of John and I going through like a BB passage would be great. Well, I don't flow chart very much on psych so it's just not that important. Cars is, is separate. I'm talking about science passages. CP, sometimes I flow chart, sometimes I don't. A lot of times that's just like going through and, and highlighting like units and stuff because they're gonna ask a bunch of math questions. But BB is a great place for flow charting. And if you like what you see in those sample test videos, then go check our, our strategies course on our website. That's where we have broken down all of the tests, double AMCs, you know, we still have one on there. One, two, three, four. We have most of five on there and I have chugged through like most of six and we're getting those edited and we're adding them as we get them. I imagine in the next like month or so we're gonna, this is, I'm filming this on October 15th. I imagine in the next month or so we're gonna have all those videos up. But I hope that helped. And if you like the way that I teach when I'm going through stuff, that's how I teach everything that I offer, okay? So talk to Damon, our guy. Check the link in the description below. We have Damon. He's very knowledgeable about MCAT studying and how me and John teach students. I mean, me and him are in constant communication. We talk every day about you guys. Comment below what you wanna see next. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.